Hare Krishna, everybody. So, Maharaj, we're just a few people short still. Yes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Kesha Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Murti Govinda Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Sen Mataji, Stan Patnam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Kesha Prabhu. Hare Krishna. If you feel it, okay, Prabhu? Yes, yes, it's okay. Don't worry. This is just some regular treatment I have to have, so nothing to worry about. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Some, sometimes you will see it, don't let it um, disturb you. So can I offer prayers now? And yes, please, Maharaj, please go ahead. Om Magyana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaha Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadhi Paschatya Desatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our uh, study of Nectar of Instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course and this is lesson number four, class number four anyway. So today we'll be looking at text number four in the Upadesha Amrita. Right? Uh, do you remember we covered the first three texts. The first text described the urges, the different urges which we have to deal with, the material body and mind and their reactions. And when the urges are not controlled, then text two described the, the qualities which will develop, the problems which will appear and which will damage our devotional service. So then text 3 went on to describe six qualities which we need to cultivate in order to advance in devotional service. So today we're going to look at how to apply uh, loving exchanges with the devotees. Right? So, uh, I'll go into the slideshow 
Let's start with the Is everyone able to see the PowerPoint? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good. Yes, <laughs> Very happy devotees. Looks like a scene from Mayapur Parikrama. And that's the kind of mood we want to continue to develop in the association of devotees. Keep the devotees happy and have loving exchanges. That's you, Maharaj, with the hat? Looks like me, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember, it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly an old picture. Okay, so revision. I've already re reviewed reviewed these things, right? We did speak about Niyamagraha. I hope it's all clear in your minds. Everything about how to apply the rules and regulations and how to adjust them. Okay, so I hope, you've me I hope you're memorizing all these verses. Remember the first four are memorization verses for this text. So they're often quoted. Oh. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, so six kinds of loving exchanges, right? Someone like to chant the verse for me? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I read. Dadati Priti Gritnati Duhya Makyati Prichati Bhunte Bojete Chaiva Sadvidam Priti Lakshanam yeah, go ahead. Read the translation. Read translation, Maharaj. Please. Okay. Translation. Offering gifts in charity, accepting charitable gifts, prevailing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prasada and offering prasada are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. All right. Thank you. So... Very important principles, because the basis of our Krishna consciousness movement are these loving exchanges. I think we all uh, de depend very much on these kind of exchanges. They're very important to keep our faith strong in Krishna consciousness. We need to have that kind of loving exchange with the devotees. If that exchange is not there, then our service and our activities in the movement become empty or meaningless. So very important. And Prabhupada paid a lot of time, spent a lot of time, gave a lot of attention to these kinds of exchanges. So we're going to look at them in detail. I'm not going to discuss each one yet. We'll go through each one in the, in the course of the, the class. From the purport of text 4, Srila Prabhupada is written, In the previous verse, Srila Rupa Goswami advised, One should renounce worldly association 
and keep company with the devotees. Sangatyagat sato vrite. Right? Give up the association of the worldly people and follow in the footsteps of the devotees. So keep the company with the devotees. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness has been established to facilitate these six kinds of loving exchanges between devotees. Sometimes we forget <laughs> why the, what's the purpose of our movement. We become so occupied in business and different managing and different things. Very important though. Here's a well-known verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sajya Kabunai Shravanari Shuddha Chite Kore Udai Pure love for Krishna, Nitya Krishna Prem, right? Is eternally established, Nitya Siddha. So pure love for Krishna is eternally in the hearts of all living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing, Shravanadi Shuddha Chiti Kore Udai, when the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, this love naturally awakens. So the message is our Krishna consciousness movement is meant for giving love of Krishna to all living entities. We're meant to give everyone, all forms of life, an opportunity to hear and if possible they can also chant. Not every living entity is able to chant, but you know, we try to at least let them hear, give them that opportunity to hear. So Prabhupada has written there, since Krishna consciousness is inherent in every living entity, everyone should be given a chance to hear about Krishna. We try to encourage that. So, Guyam Akyati Prichati, principle. Guyam Akyati Prichati. Guyam confidential, right? Inquiring confidentially and revealing one's mind in confidence. This is special loving exchange. So Prabhupada explains about this. One should inquire about the Krishna consciousness movement. So when we inquire, it should be in relation to Krishna. It shouldn't just be mundane, it shouldn't be prajapa. It must be in Krishna consciousness. So inquire about the Krishna consciousness movement. Open the mind in order to understand the situation of this material world. Thus the Guyamakyati Prichati principle can be served. So it's important for us to inquire. We know also in Bhagavad Gita 434, famous verse, just, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master and inquire from him. So, Pari Prashnina, right? Pari Prashnina. Here it's Prachati. So, same thing, inquiring, putting questions before. Some, but before the, the authority, before the spiritual master, before a confidential devotee, confidential friend. We want to inquire about Krishna consciousness and understand more the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So it's very important. We used to regularly, we would always have what was called Istagosti. Istagosti was meeting of the devotees where they would come together and discuss Krishna consciousness. It was a regular program when I joined the movement. And, you know, every week we would have Istagosti and we would all sit together and we would discuss Krishna consciousness. I don't see these kind of activities going on now. 
everything is so, you know, I don't know, it's just times, of, times are different, people are different. Of course, it's congregation more than ashram. When we're in the ashram, it's easier to facilitate these programs. But the same thing, you know, people are not living in the ashram, but still, if they know Istagosti, it's a nice opportunity to come and associate together. And here is uh, Sanatan Goswami, in how he inquired from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now Sanatana Goswami put these questions to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, he was not in ignorance about these things. He knew very well, but he wanted to hear from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted to give Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the opportunity to, to speak on Krishna topics. So sometimes when we hear a class, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we may be reluctant to put a question, no, I don't have any question, but even though we may know the answer, still it's nice to put a question if something is not being covered by the speaker, try to give the speaker an opportunity to speak something more to enlighten the audience. So Sanatana Goswami asked Lord Chaitanya, Kiyami, who am I? Why do the threefold miseries always give me trouble? If I don't know this, how can I be benefited? So, this is the kind of inquiries we want to make. We want to try to understand more the nature of the world. Continuing, the life of the Krishna Consciousness Society is nourished by these six types of loving exchange among the members. Therefore, people must be given the chance to associate with the devotees of ISKCON, because simply by reciprocating in the six ways mentioned above, an ordinary man can fully revive his dormant Krishna consciousness. Right? We want to give everyone a chance to become devotee. There are many devotees. We're seeing more and more people come to Krishna consciousness. This year, I don't, maybe it's because of the pandemic, but there's so much interest, so many more people. We're just, we're give, constantly having to give the disciple course, new people coming in. They want to get more knowledge. They want to become initiated. So many more people coming to Krishna Consciousness. There's a real need and that means our responsibility becomes greater because we have to take care of them. And taking care of them means giving these different kinds of loving exchanges, encouraging them. Okay, Srila Prabhupada is written here, Bhagavad Gita 262. It is stated, San, Sangat Sanjayate Kama, one's desires and ambitions develop according to the company one keeps. Mm. Sangat Sanjayate Kama, Kama Krodo Vijayate, right? That's the verse. Dayato Vishayam Pumsa, Sangas Teshu Vijayate, Sangat Sanjayate Kama, Kama Krodo. Anyway, Prabhupada relates it in this way. He says, one's desires, contemplating the objects of the senses, one becomes attached to them. From such attachment, lust develops. Sangat Sanjayate Kama, that our ambitions, our desires develop according to the Sangha, the association we're having. So we want to bring people into the Krishna Conscious Association so they can develop a good desire. Talking about the Dadati principle. Dadati meaning giving. Prabhupada explains, according to Vedic literature, it is enjoined that charity should be given to the Brahmanas. Why? Because they are engaged in higher cultivation of spiritual knowledge. 
So Brahmana is allowed to, he, he, the Vedic culture anyway, a Brahmana has six different occupations which he's supposed to do. He may worship the deity and he may teach others to worship the deity. He may study scriptures and he may teach others the scriptures. He may also accept charity and he may give charity. So uh, it is said that in the Kali Yuga, the Brahmanas in the Kali Yuga are expert in only one of these six activities. They're expert in accepting charity. <laughs> they never do anything else. So that, that, that is the criticism of the Brahmanas. And of course that's a failure of the Varnashram Dharma because the Brahmanas didn't follow their proper Brahminical duties, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So people became disgusted with the Brahmanas and they gave up the Varnashram system. But traditionally a Brahmana was allowed to accept charity. According to the four divisions, Varna and Ashram, Kshatriya and Vaishyas are especially advised to perform great ceremonial sacrifices and to discharge their accumulated money very liberally. <laughs> so this means Kshatriyas means great kings, powerful leaders, people who are in big positions, you could say maybe like modern day politicians. But they tend to have a lot of money these days. And the Vaishyas, Vaishya means somebody, not just, not just a small businessman, but an industrialist, you know, somebody with a big, big business, <laughs> who's really uh, w wealthy, then they're expected to distribute their wealth in a liberal manner. Kings like Maharaj Janak, he was very liberal in giving charity, give to everyone. And, and we know people the, among the Vaishyas, like in India, you have people like the Birlas, you know, they would build their temples, Lakshmi Narayan temple, Birla temple, here and there. They like to do that kind of thing. Many other similar people in India. Uh, so now Prabhupada is explaining his uh, Dadati principle. We're quoting to you Srila Prabhupada's words. So he gives a, an example. Now suppose if there are 100 persons in a society, 25% students, means brahmacharis, 25% retired life, means vanaprastha, and 25% sannyas, renounced order. Now, out of 100 persons, 75% are engaged in the service of the Lord. Right? The brahmacharis, the vanaprastas, the sannyasis, they're full-time engaged in the service of the Lord. The rest, 25% who are grihasta, they are meant for sacrificing 50% of their income to support the 75%. This is a whole program of Varnashram Dharma. That is a kind of spiritual communism. In communist society, everything belongs to the state. And in spiritual communism, everything belongs to who? Krishna. 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 Yes, Krishna. right. Everything belongs to Krishna. That's right. So, it should be used for Krishna's service. So, for spiritual advancement of a society, the whole social order is so arranged 75% of the people, they are engaged in spiritual advancement of knowledge. 
and 25% of the population, those who are earning, those who are in family life, those who have got factory, business and so many things, they should sacrifice 50% of their income for these 75% persons who are engaged in spiritual emancipation. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Um, we have a question from Satinandana Vishwambara Prabhu. Really? Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, this verse, uh, Dadati Prati Ganati, uh, it seems that uh, it's talking about giving gifts and affecting gift, uh, accepting gifts in charity. Simultaneously, it's been uh, talked of the loving exchanges between the devotees. So just uh, as, as you're explaining in charity in particular, it seems to be uh, that uh, uh, going to the one ashram system of the society where Drastas give it in charity. But then uh, is it only for the uh, supporting of one ashram system or it is also uh, between the two general Drastas? Between, between the what? Please just unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Is it is it just between uh, the uh, uh, f for the support of one ashram system between rastas and uh, all other ashramas, or this principle also applies between two friends? I mean, it, they may be two grahastas, they may be two brahmacharis, they may be two sannyasis, because it is written given gift in charity. So uh, I just wanted to understand the significance of in charity word there. It may have been given gifts or only. Well, certainly if somebody else is, you know, among our devotee community is in difficulty, then we certainly want to help them and take care of them. But what's the, this, the reference is that those who are grihastas, and who are wealthy, then they're meant to help to support the other ashrams. Now, so, yeah? Is it, is it like, I mean, uh, the two grahasas, for, for the loving exchange between the devotees, the two grahasas should also exchange gifts sometimes, or maybe accept gifts from each other, or even two brahmacharis, or even two sannyasis, they may accept or give gifts to each other. Oh, yes. So, I... Definitely. Just like I, I was saying, brahmanas are allowed to accept charity and they are also allowed to give charity. And they can give charity to sannyasis, they can give charity to brahmanas, they can give charity to non-brahmanas also. Okay, so it's like particularly mentioned for, for brahmanas. I was considering it for two general devotees who maybe have come to Krishna consciousness and want to have relationship between each other. Well, everyone who's in Krishna consciousness, we consider them like a brahmana. Okay. We're not talking about caste brahmanas, you see? I, I understand, I understand. So, devotee, devotee brahmana, Vaishnava brahmana, They've come to Krishna consciousness, they may not be initiated, that's all right. But, you know, if they're practicing Krishna consciousness and they follow the principles and so on, then, you know, we may like to encourage them and help them. We may show our appreciation for them, give them some charity, at least give them prasadam, offer everyone prasadam. That's a very common form of charity, isn't it? We distribute foodstuffs to everyone. We cannot say, "Oh, you're you're not you're a saint, you're you're not a devotee. I can't. I'm not going to give you prasadam." <laughs> we give to everyone. Right. Can I just can, can I just add something there? Yeah. So in our Indian traditions, times like Diwali or um, a wedding or a birth of a baby or something, we tend to visit people a lot and offer sweets you know, in gratitude for that um, relationship that we have. Um, so I think it's a bit like that, isn't it? That um, we should be giving to um, all in a, in a loving mood of exchange. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, the, the mood of giving. Yeah, it, there must be, you know, genuine love, not grudgingly that we give this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So would that be called giving and accepting in charity? That's like a general, uh, whenever I go to some grass house, maybe for a prasad and all, I take something, some gift for them. And I, while returning, they sometimes give a return gift sometimes. So yeah. uh, that won't be charity, that will be just a, a uh, it's, loving It's exchange. a loving exchange, right. Yeah, it's a loving exchange. Yeah, nice. Definitely, a loving exchange is a higher form. It's not exactly charity. Well, we think, but we have that idea about charity. We think charity, we give something to the needy person, you know, but it, it, charity, loving exchange could also be considered charity, you know. And it's just a matter of how we use the word. What do you think, Krishna Keshava? Yeah, I think I think you're right. I mean, there's a distinction. I think personally, I think there's a distinction between giving charity and actually genuinely, you know, from the heart, giving somebody something because we have that um, loving relationship with them. There's that sweetness in devotee relationships. You know, we become happy to see them. We want to encourage them. They also are happy to see us. They want to encourage us. And there is that exchange. Like somebody comes to my house, I, I feel nice to offer them Mahaprasadam. I have some sweets here. You know, and it feels good to offer them that Mahaprasadam. It's not charity, it's because, you know, I feel a closeness towards, that, towards the devotees. There's a special bond there between devotees, and I think we have to nurture that. And giving charity, I think, is a whole different thing. Giving charity, I think, is, is a duty, you know, where there is an actual need. So there's a distinction between a loving exchange and offering something in terms of a need. So I mean that's 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 how I I, I think about it. Okay. I go to the temple. I go to the temple every day to take darshan. But I wouldn't dream of just going into the temple, paying obeisances, offering a lamp, you know, maybe some taking some charamrit and walking away again, because the temple needs to be maintained, the buildings need to be maintained, the flowers need to be bought, and all these things. You know, they cost some money, and so we should contribute, but we should contribute willingly and from the heart. So it's, it's charity given with love, I think, but there's also a distinction between loving exchanges between devotees, which is on a whole different platform. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that all right with the person who asked the question, Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj, yes, Maharaj. Okay, we'll so go. So you've got two more hands up. Would you like to take two, these two questions, Maharaj, or do you want to wait till later? Uh, okay, since their hands are up, let's take them now. Okay, so we have um, Murli Govinda Prabhu, and then we'll take a question from Harish, Harish Vari Madhavi Madhavi. So Murli Govinda, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Jandak Pranams. Uh, Maharaj, sometimes when we go to these functions or visiting any relatives' houses and all, can we distribute this transcendental knowledge in the form of Prabhupada books? I always uh, contemplate on that, but uh, my wife always prohibits me. If they don't study, why you have to give those books and all? Like you give some kind of gifts in kind of either cash or some kind. But I feel always that uh, these kind of books, Prabhupada books, are eternally good for the people. Oh, definitely. Oh. Definitely. I would I would encourage you. You definitely do want to give Prabhupada's books at every opportunity. Try to give Prabhupada's books to people. Very nice. You never know. They may not appear to be interested, but you never know. We don't... It's amazing how many people got books and they kept it for a long time, they never read it, and then suddenly they pick it up and they read it, and their life changes. So it's very important to distribute these books at wherever you go, at every opportunity. And it's very nice charity, the highest charity. Yes. And the other question? Um, Harish, Harish Karim, Madhuri Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So I had a similar question. It's like, uh, it is said that we should give charity to suitable brahmanas and also. But uh, Prabhupada gives example to give Krishna consciousness in charity. So how do we understand that? 
Uh -huh. Because not everybody, pe new people, they are not uh, like uh, not, eligible. They are not the brahmanas. Sense, like, right. For the charity, if you understand from like, giving to Sukhi people. Yes. Well, for the, the people who are new, not, not devotees, non devotees, we give them, you're giving them some mercy. You're giving them some, a chance to do maybe a Gyata Sukriti. You're giving them an opportunity to enter into Krishna consciousness. So we, you, of course when we distribute foodstuffs, we don't just give to brahmanas, we give to everyone. And similarly when we speak on spiritual knowledge, we give it to everyone who wants to, who's willing to hear. But giving charity, you know, that may be like distributing wealth or so, you know, then, and even with prasadam, generally they say you should give to the brahmanas first, first feed the brahmanas and then the, then the other people. Some, there's some kind of distinction like that in the, in the, in the, uh, maybe in the, in the, in the caste society they would do like that. In the, in the Hindu society, they would give the brahmanas first, they would give them distinction, the senior people, and like that, feed them first. And then distributing wealth, we are very careful about distributing wealth. Generally, we would give it to somebody like a brahmana who would use the money for spiritual purposes. You don't want to give wealth to people who are engaged in sinful activities because then they would give them they would use the money for their bad habits so we're cautious about who we give money to when you give charity generally you give charity you want to make sure that it's going to be used properly even may not be money maybe you give blankets to somebody but they may go and sell it and buy alcohol or buy cigarettes for themselves you don't know what they're going to do because they have bad habits so that's why we're a little cautious about who we give charity to. Just like here in Mayapur, Prabhupada said, you know, he wanted food distribution here in Mayapur. He said, everybody can come and eat, but he said, they can't take the food away with them. He didn't want them to take the food away and he said, if they take the food home, they will mix it with fish. Because he knows Bengali people have that habit of eating fish a lot. So he didn't want them taking the prasadam home and mixing it with fish. So he said, let them come and eat here, and, but they shouldn't take it away with them. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead. Let's see. Uh, some more points here about... Okay, this is a quote from the, Brahmi, uh, from the Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, chapter 9, verse 27, purport. In the Brahmachari life, the training is sufficiently imparted so that one may understand the world as property belongs to the Supreme Lord. No one therefore can claim to be the proprietor of anything in the world. Therefore, in the life of a householder, which is a sort of license for sex enjoyment, one must give in charity for the service of the Lord. Everyone's energy is generated or borrowed from the reservoir of energy of the Lord. Therefore, the resultant actions of such energy must be given to the Lord in the shape of transcendental loving service to Him. So Prabhupada is just encouraging the householders that you know it's their duty to give charity because generally householders have opportunity for sense gratification. Unlike the brahmacharis who are not supposed to have sense gratification and the vanaprastas and the sannyasis, they're supposed to be a little austere, which is not really there in householder life. Supposed to be, theoretically, <laughs> you know, we could argue about it. Another quote, first canto, fifth chapter, text number 30. In this fallen age of quarrel and dissension, if only the leading and wealthy persons of society agreed to spend 50% of their income in the service of the Lord, as it is taught by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is absolute certainty of converting this hell of pandemonium to the transcendental abode of the Lord. 
And so Prabhupada points out who he, who he expects to give charity. The leading and wealthy persons. Right? In other words, you know, people should have money. We don't want to, you know, ordinary people who are struggling, who have a lot of trouble just to maintain everything. They, of course, they can't give 50%, but people are very wealthy, big positions, they have a lot of power. They can give more, they can give money. And we have, we have, we have seen, you know, people like Ambarish Prabhu, who is from Henry Ford, family, the grandson of Henry Ford, how he put 30 million dollars into building this temple of the Vedic planetarium in Mayapur. And he's not unique, he's not the only person. There are other people in different places, in Delhi, some of Gopal Krishna Goswami's disciples have put a lot of money to build temples in different parts of Delhi and around there. And we have many wonderful devotees contributing to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. In Prabhupada's time, that English musician George Harrison purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor for Prabhupada, for the movement. It's a property worth a lot of money now. And then, uh, in different places, devotees have contributed. We have nice We've been fortunate, Krishna has sent nice people to help. Although Prabhupada said he went to America with no money, he was able to build a nice empire. Another quote, Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, chapter 17, verse 42. When everyone is taught to sacrifice 50% of his accumulated gold for the Lord's service, then certainly austerity, cleanliness and mercy automatically ensue and thus the last three legs of the personality of religion are automatically established. So again Prabhupada says accumulated gold. So not everybody has accumulated gold. But if you do, yeah, then you know, try to use it for Krishna. So. What is our biggest gift? What do you think? What can we offer to the public? What does the Krishna Consciousness Movement have to offer? Any hands up? Yeah, we have uh, Somya Mataji's hand went up first. Somya Mataji? Uh, we have to distribute Krishna Prema, love of God to everyone. Maharaj. So how are you going to give it? I want to preach in my place about Krishna Consciousness. How are you going to preach? Yeah. How are you going to do it? You're just going to sit down and wait for people to come? No, Maharaj, I may try book distribution or call my friends at my place to tell them about Krishna Consciousness. Oh, you're only going to preach to your friends. Is it? You're only going to preach to friends? You're not going to preach to other people? You're not going to make new friends? Yes, Maharaj. With the help of my friends, I can make new friends and make them also Krishna conscious. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let someone else like to contribute here? Thank you, Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, the biggest gift is uh, distribute Srila Prabhupada book. Okay. You're going to distribute Prabhupada's books. Does that mean people who don't read, they won't be able to become Krishna conscious? And then we have um, Chandra Vamshi. So we have started the preaching and uh, visiting the village to village and distributing the books and uh, also uh, encouraging them in the villages about the cow seva and uh, you know like uh, distributing the prasadam. Uh, okay. I don't know people in the village, have they got money to buy books? 
Look, the, the, the village people is like really greedy in these days, Maharaj. And only if there's a day, it's like it's free. Oh, you give the book free? We are giving the books free, you know, like uh, then uh, we are encouraging them to come to the upper place. Initially, we are going to them and uh, you know, by explaining the importance of this, and we are giving them the permanent address so they can come back to us. So then we are starting with hungry. All right, yes. But still, there's something more important. I think you've all missed it, the most important gift which we have. What, I, I didn't get that. There's one, there's one thing where you're missing, the most important gift which we have. Nobody's mentioned it yet. Hey Krishna Maharaj, Gandhatna. Yeah. I will tell them about holy name Prabhu Maharaj for everybody. Yes, right. That's the point. The holy name. Yes. Right. The holy name of the Lord is a sublime example of giving charity contributing. Give the holy name, right? Sankirtan, the holy name for everyone, educated or uneducated, literate or illiterate, everyone, young and old, women and children, everyone can chant the holy name. So this is our charity, this is the highest charity, giving the holy name. Let everybody be awakened to Krishna Consciousness by hearing the Holy Name. And so we may not have wealth, we may not have education, okay, no problem, but the chanting of the Holy Name, very powerful. All right? Okay then. Prabhupada had gone to Kumbh Mela. 1977, I think it was, and he was not so happy because the devotees had not arranged much by way of prasadam distribution. So after he came back from the Kumbha Mela, he wrote this letter to the ISKCON temple presidents. I don't know if you've all seen this letter or not. But it was circulated to all temple presidents and he told all, all the temples all over the world that everybody, everywhere, you have to have prasadam and you have to give it to the people when they come to temple, right? There must be sufficient stock. And of course it's not sold, but they just give them some prasadam. And Prabhupada mentioned what he wanted. He said, Puri, Sabji, Pakora, even Halava if possible. And he said, they should make about 20 servings. And then when it's, if it's not finished at the end of the day, then give it to the devotees or go out and distribute it somewhere. Not that you keep it, put it in the fridge and warm it up tomorrow. <laughs> That's not very first class prasada. Should be fresh. So Prabhupada ordered like this, distribution of prasadam everywhere, every temple. And Prabhupada said, Krishna is not a poor man. Krishna is providing, maintaining everyone. Why should we be misers? This means losing faith in Krishna and thinking we are the doers. We are confident Krishna will supply. Let the whole world come. We can feed them. So please do this nicely. Begin at once. <laughs> that was, you can see, time of the Kumbha Mela, 1977. So Prabhupada was very fond of seeing prasadam distribution. I remember in England when Prabhupada came there, we had a big program, it's 1971 also, uh, 
and Prabhupada, we had a, arranged a program for Srila Prabhupada in a, a town hall in a suburb in London. And we, were, we had prepared prasada and Prabhupada said, bring me a plate of prasadam, I want to see what you're distributing. In fact, wherever Prabhupada would go, he would always check to see what was the prasadam, what kind of prasadam we're distributing to people. And sometimes he would praise it and sometimes he would say, this is terrible. Who cooked this? He said, this is terrible food. Who's made this? So he was very particular. He really wanted that the devotees should do this very nicely, very important, because prasadam, it's a loving exchange. And if it's a loving exchange, you want to offer the best. If there's love, then we'll be very careful what we offer to people. So we should really be conscious that when we're cooking, you want to make the food, it should be tasty, it should be fresh, it shouldn't be cold or stale, like that. Okay, and there's another example here we've given also in the Dati principle. Upendra was Prabhupada's servant and he described when he got initiated, he gave Prabhupada a present. And he didn't give him money, he thought, you know, he wanted to give Prabhupada something else. He gave Prabhupada a baby blanket and a beach towel. So Prabhupada looked at these things and then he, he held them up and he said, these things are useless. <laughs> Prabhupada didn't think much of them. So Upendra said he was a bit disappointed. But anyway, that night he, he came back to Prabhupada's room and he saw Prabhupada had put the beach towel and the baby blanket on the floor for people to sit on. So he was appreciating that Srila Prabhupada found some use for the things which he had offered to him. So, you have to be a little cautious about this Dadati principle, about uh, giving. Uh, we want to give something which is useful. One devotee, uh, <laughs> he, he gave his spiritual master, he gave his spiritual master a beer mug. <laughs> The spiritual master was not very, very pleased with it. <laughs> anyway, that's a long, uh, an unfortunate incident. But some, sometimes, you know, the gifts are not very appropriate. So we try to make the gift appropriate. And when things are offered, then it's the duty of the devotee to accept. One of Srila Prabhupada's senior devotees describes how they were with Prabhupada in India in the very early years, 1970 on. They were doing Sankirtan in the villages and people would come out and give things. And they would often say, no, I don't want it. No, I, I don't need this. You know, they'd come and give cloth or something. And say, no, no, it's okay, I don't need it. But Prabhupada would get upset and say, no, you have to accept. When people offer you something, you have to accept it. So we accept it, even though we may not want it, we accept it, and later on you can always give it to somebody else. Right? That's the idea. Just like, uh, I think it was Jagannath Das Babaji, he was given, you know, a, an, an expensive blanket by one man. And so the man thought, oh, see, yeah, he wants a blanket, he's still materialistic. But Jagannath Das Babaji took the blanket, he put, kept it with him, and then he gave it to a Brahmana couple. You know, and, uh, he gave it to a Brahmana couple who were very poor. He didn't take it for himself, he took it to give to someone else. So we should understand like that. Just like people often, as a devotee in the Krishna consciousness movement, people sometimes come and give donations. And so we can take the donation and we don't keep it for ourselves. We don't have bank accounts usually and we just give the money to the temple. 
right? They give the money to us, but you know, we, I don't need any money. I live in the temple and I eat Krishna Prasadam, so I don't really need much money. I, give, I can give the money to the temple for the service of the deity. So it's like that. Okay, the Dati principle. First Canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, First Canto, Chapter 17, Text 42. Everyone is taught to sacrifice 50% accumulated gold. Okay, I think we read that. Okay, expertise in Pratigrinati principle. One thing is to give, another thing is to receive. I spoke about receiving, I said myself, you know, you have, have to be a little careful because as a sannyasi, you don't want to be keeping a lot of things, a lot of wealth or a lot of things, you can get attached. So, Prabhupada has written here in this purport, unless one is very advanced, he is unable to utilize everyone's contribution to further the Krishna consciousness movement. So how do you feel about this? Are you, are you all satisfied that our Krishna consciousness movement is taking good care to utilize the contributions given to the movement and to the devotees? Any comments? On one hand, we have contributions given to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. On the other hand, you have also contributions given to individual members in the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Are you asking, Maharaj, that are we, are we understanding how to, or are we actually utilizing and looking after these resources properly? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Um, so you have got somebody with the hand up there, Sachinandan Sachi Vamsi, uh, Vishwambar Prabhu, sorry. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, yes, the, the, we see lots of contributions being properly utilized, uh, like uh, uh, ISKCON have food for life program in which uh, the donations given by the members of the society gets used for distribution of the sad and, uh, uh, it is. It has been appreciated a lot, especially in the time of pandemic. Also, particularly in Delhi, it uh, is gone. Uh, like uh, had the world records in, uh, in uh, distribution of meals. So this is a very nice uh, thing that uh, it is. It is being utilized, and sometimes we also see due to mismanagement, the things even get wasted. I mean, the foodstuffs they are cooked and they are not supplied properly. So they get wasted, or sometimes. Even because the, the donations are given to the individuals and uh, they may or they may not uh, go uh, in a proper uh, to proper channel to the ISKCON treasury or uh, the, uh, it may not be accounted, so it may be misused. So, so uh, this, this requires a bit of management and a bit awareness that any donation which is given it should be taken, uh, it's, uh, the slip, uh, donation slip should be taken. So. I feel uh, this, uh, both things are there and uh, the simultaneously system is being uh, managed to make it uh, proper, make it safe. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Yes, Gener generally we see that in the temples that there should be, you know, a receipt. There should be someone there to give a receipt and you get the receipt and that way there's some record kept of the donation. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have a sign at the manor when we take donations, um, there's signs everywhere, please expect and ask for a receipt, um, just to make sure that devotees are encouraged to understand that, you know, there should be transparency um, in the way we do things. Yes. I think that's also important because it, it kind of it creates a feeling of responsibility, doesn't it, within the center? Yeah, exactly. We're a registered society, both here in India and also in England. 
you're a registered society, a registered chat with the charity commission there in England, here in India, I think also with the charity, I don't know, is it charity, charitable foundation? Yeah. So, so when they, they write the receipt and then they make accounts, the accounts have to be audited every year. And the auditor comes and will check everything, look at the receipt books and look at the accounts and the bank books and check everything. And that way then, you know, if somebody has any doubts about their financial affairs of this, they can look at the accounts and they can see the audited accounts. That, that principle should be there that anybody wants, they can come and they can look the accounts that they're audited. And every year the charity status has to be renewed. And if we cannot provide proper accounts, then they won't give you the tax exemption status. Yeah. So, very important. So, we, the movement uh, does try best to control these things. And you can see a lot of big projects going on, not only Food for Life, you know, but the, the Mayapur temple which they're building and so many farm projects and different programs. So, there's no, no shortage of opportunity. It's echoing a lot. Uh, I'm just sorry to disturb, but it's echoing a lot. It's coming from me, is it? The echo is coming. I don't know, but it is echo is coming a lot. I can't hear. I can't hear an echo in my end. Um, so I don't know where that's coming from. Is anybody on? On is anybody got their mic on? I can't see anybody else with their mic on apart from me. But we should all switch off our mics um, while Maharaj is speaking because that may help. I'll switch mine off as well. Perhaps try speaking now, Maharaj, and let's see what happens. All right. So, I'm. We were talking about this Pratigrinati principle, the idea of receiving charity, that it, it's not, not very easy, it's a difficult thing to make sure the charity which is given is used properly. And so we say when, you, when we give donations to the temple, make sure you get a receipt, very important. Uh, let's see. So probably... Right, you, have a, you have a question from Murli Govinda. Uh-huh. Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharas. <coughs> See, like, <coughs> I feel His Divine Guest Srila Prabhupada has given a lot of charity across the globe to so many people. So, as a uh, Pratikrihnati principle, so many advanced devotees like uh, this uh, Maharaja Sanyasis, then uh, senior Vaishnavas, Brahmacharis, they are all distributing the transcendental wealth and holy name <coughs> to all the people. So, here, uh, where is the question of receipts and our Maharaj? Just like that, they have acknowledged whatever is given by the Dadati principle by uh, His Divine Guest Srila Prabhupada. And in return, all His disciples are giving that Pratikrishnati principle back to the world. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting point. But in terms of practicality, there has to be also some funds. You know, you want people to come and give the holy name. We have to also be able to feed the people. We have to be able to accommodate the people. There has to be some place where you can give the holy name. So we need to maintain buildings and temples and properties. You want to go places, you want to travel there to different towns and villages all over the planet to give the holy name. You know, it, you can't walk. Lord Chaitanya walked around India, but he took six years to go around India. You know, we cannot go walking all the way everywhere. Not today. Many places, you, they won't let you walk. They don't have roads. Bhakti Mark Swami, he could walk. He walked across Canada. He walked down to Washington. 
He did some walking, but limited. So, you know, there has to be some resources, there has to be some funds. Prabhupada had great difficulty to go to America. He was fortunate that he got the sponsorship on the boat. So, <laughs> that's, you know, that was Krishna's arrangement to send him to America by boat. But still, generally, and that was without funds, without money. And he came to America with no money. It's so difficult to move. And so we want to do things, we want to establish the Krishna consciousness movement. There has to be some funds, there has to be some organization also to control the funds. And it's important. Okay, so Prabhupada's mentioning here about non-devotees, people like Sahajyas. He says they're sometimes known as Vaishnavas, but they're more like non-Vaishnavas or Avaishnavas. Sahajyas, they take everything very cheap. So we should be careful about them. Their association changes the transcendental devotional service of Lord Krishna into sense gratification. And when sense gratification enters the mind of a devotee, he is contaminated. Materialistic people who aspire after sense gratification cannot properly think of Krishna. Unmute. Okay. So here I am again. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Let me see. I'm not used to this computer though. Oh my goodness. I have to okay, so uh sh screen sharing. sharing my screen? Yes, yes, yeah, we can see that. 
Okay. You got the PowerPoint? Slideshow. I have to go through this again. So we were talking about the loving exchanges and we were coming, we were at Pratigrinati, we had some difficulties there, sometimes can be. The main problem, you know, money itself can be contaminating. So if a, a person thinks this money belongs to me, then that is a problem. So we have to understand that whatever donations are given, they actually belong to the society. They don't belong to the individual. So Prabhupada explains here, Money is undoubtedly coming in great quantities, but we should not be attached to this money for sense gratification. Every cent should be spent for spreading Krishna Consciousness Movement, not for sense gratification. There is danger for a preacher when he receives great quantities of money, for as soon as he spends even, even a single cent of the collection for his personal sense gratification, he becomes a fallen victim. And that's from Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, Chapter 13, Text number 32 purport. So Srila Prabhupada himself warns all of us. And here we quote his own, Prabhupada's own spiritual master. If you ever get money, print books. That's good advice. Use the money to print books. And in the early days of our Krishna consciousness movement, our movement didn't have money. We never had money. We were always in debt. And so money was not a big problem, we didn't have it. <laughs> but Prabhupada did say that if you get money, then 50%, whatever income comes to the temple, half of it should go for books to the BBT, buy books from the BBT and keep the books in the temple. Even the temple doesn't have much money, if you have books, and then it's good, you can go out and preach. So Prabhupada liked that. Keep books, don't keep money, don't keep money in the bank. Better you keep books. And then Prabhupada talks about the, the problem with money, that it attracts the opposite sex. It may be a man's got money, it may be a woman's got money. Sometimes rich women are also there and they attract the men. So we Krishna conscious men have to deal with women and money in the course of preaching work. And the only prophylactic measure is to save us, not to accept them for our sense gratification. Mm. Prophylactic will protect us from the contamination. So if we don't use them for sense gratification, then we shall remain strong enough. Materialistic people take everything for sense gratification and Krishna conscious people take everything for Krishna's satisfaction. There is no fault in the thing as it is, women and money, but it becomes faulty by improper use and the improper use is to accept them for sense gratification. So caution, we have to be very careful, always be on guard, right? So here's a question we want to talk about for some time. Is God's success in facilitating loving exchange? You can see a beautiful picture here, Srila Prabhupada giving prasadam to the children. 
how, create, how it creates lasting, lifelong impressions in the mind of the child, how Srila Prabhupada gave them a cookie or something. Hmm? So, here's our question for the devotees. We're going to have a little gr group work. Have we got time? Can we do it? Krishna Keshava Prabhu? Yes, we've got, we've got 30 minutes. Okay, can so we have we time? We could spend 15 minutes um, in groups and then we could have feedback for 15 minutes. We may not be able to hear from all the groups, but you can certainly take responses from maybe two or three groups afterwards. All right, so we want read the question. We want you to reflect on situations where you felt nourished by one or more of the loving exchanges or in which you felt starved, no affection between devotees by exchanges that could have been within the realm of loving exchange, but somehow they weren't. So please consider, are you going to put the devotees into groups, Prabhu? I am, yes. Shall I, set, shall I open the rooms now? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so you'll be in random um, groups of between six to seven people, or seven to eight people actually, I beg your pardon. Yeah, okay. Join your rooms now. Oh, I'm in room five. Right. <laughs> so somebody's going to have Maharaj in their room. He's going to join you for a while and I'll flip from room to room. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes. Raja Vijay Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So you you lead the group. You read you can lead the group, Raja Vijay Prabhu. Lead the discussion. Yeah. We are discussing about the, the the six exchanges, right? So let's first discuss about what are the exchanges we are going to have. The the exchanges. Can anybody tell me please? Well, giving prasadam and accepting prasadam. Thank you much. <laughs> Asking the other devotees also, like giving prasadam and exchanging prasadam. Accepting gifts. Sorry, Mataji? Giving gifts and accepting gifts. Very good. Yeah. Gifts and accepting gifts. Yeah. Okay, we can add a point. Um, really giving thoughtful gifts like um, to a Brahmin, uh, some nice. devotee would be in the need of some particular need of something which would be useful for their preaching or something so on and so forth so yeah, we can have a thoughtful gift in that way okay so for the needy right in the need right anybody else Jana and uh, you might ask for you you like to contribute something Chidanandas you might ask sorry Oh, sorry. No, I just, I just mentioned that point. Uh, Wait, I, I, yeah. uh, I, was, I was just saying that um, give thoughtful gifts. I mean, um, you know, if for, a, for, a, for a, suppose a brahmachari is going out and teaching and you notice that 
um, because of his enthusiastic preaching, his dhoti has been torn. So a nice gift, a nice thought on your part would be to give a nice dhoti for the brahmachari so that he can continue his preaching. I mean, he may not realize it, but um, it's a nice th thought on your part to notice these small things and have a thoughtful gift in, that, in such a manner. Okay, thank you. Saurabh Prabhu, you want to contribute something? Hare Krishna, Saurabh Prabhu. Am I audible, please? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, we can reveal our minds in confidence and also inquire confidentially with someone who is, uh, maybe we are mentoring someone or if, if some friend, if some devotee friend is also coming to us and he wants to just say something confidentially to us, we can understand his point of view and can help him. Mm. Okay, confidentiality, okay, confidential matters. Yeah. So anybody else has got any other points to discuss? I remember one, one uh, I met a young man from South America and he was telling me how he had been studying in Australia and he said he, he took part in the Melbourne Marathon, you know, oh no, it was a Sydney Marathon, Sydney Marathon, right, and they were running and he said he remembers at the end, during the, the, the devotees came with pieces of orange. And he said, you know, he was so hot and sweaty and he said it felt so good. He said, I just remember these devotees coming. They gave me these pieces of orange to eat. He said, I can never forget. <laughs> so just a little gift, but at a very appropriate time, you know, when he was really hot and exhausted and, and devotees came, they gave this, they were distributing oranges to all the runners. And so he really appreciated it, made a, a deep impression on his mind. Yes, Maharaj, we also are doing the same kind of thing here in Brisbane. You know, we are going out in the beach or something like that, you know. We, I have personally approached uh, some, uh, you know, there's a big vegetable market here, so I've approached them. And one time, one of the vegetable seller, he, because we buy regularly vegetables from them for the temple and for the, uh, for the Govindas, so he gave one big bin, which was about half a ton of uh, oranges oh. and we, we distributed on the beach when we went on the arena. Yeah, and people really appreciate that. Eh? Yes, yeah. and a lot of times we also make cookies and uh, we distribute on the street, especially on the New Year Eve when there are thousands of people are there uh, watching the fireworks and we distribute the cookies and people, like, they really come and grab from us, you know. <laughs> so, that, and we write a small note on it about Hare Krishna and what we are and the people they appreciate that. Mm. Anybody else want to add any other points? Um, Hare Krishna Prabhu, this is Krish uh, I'm Krishna Vijayadas. So uh, one thing about loving exchanges among devotees is uh, usually we have once or twice uh, sanghas among the you know different grahasthas here in Mayapur. So, where we come together, we read the books, uh, discuss, you know, and sometimes share also some devotees have some concerns about, the, you know, uh, how they, if they're struggling in their uh, sadhana, then we encourage them. And also, if somebody has some concerns, we also discuss. And then we have give them together, and then we have prasadam. So, this, you know, this is always helping devotees. Uh, to keep up their sadhana and Krishna consciousness, you know, it's uh, like very, you know, this all sadhanas are very enlightening, you know. Very nice point, very good point. Um, uh, um, we also recently, during this pandemic period, because everything was locked down, everybody was in their own. So we were finding a bit slack in our chanting. So we start, we have started a morning chapa session on Zoom. And a um, lot of devotees we meet together and that on, on Zoom. And it, it has become so nice and very ecstatic that our no matter what time we sleep, like here, uh, yesterday night, last night, we had slept quite late, but it was there in my conscience that I have to get up, I have to meet all the devotees on Zoom and we have to chant together. So this is one of the exchanges. Uh, and we, we give 10 minutes 
this devotee is about um, uh, 10 minutes in 10 minutes we discuss few of the spiritual topics so which is quite related to what you are saying prabhu very much thank you very much the mm. maharaj saying yes you need to discuss so that is that is only the brisbane devotees have come or the whole of australia even the seven devotees from papa nivedi is coming joining from sydney also some new but there is a time difference so it becomes a bit of a different difficult so but we have about uh, 30 of us regularly regularly we are chanting oh, very good everything. yeah do you have any examples of negative experience? I think maybe, in, in, say, like you run a restaurant, do people come, they complain, you know, that you know, food is too expensive, or do you have trouble like that with people any time? Um, generally, March uh, in Australia, they like uh, the halwa and the kofta, very popular among the ISKCON, you know, Devotees, they go from town to town, they have shows and they participate in the shows and very popular. Uh, Sometimes, yes, a few times we had a bit of a difficulty in, in the restaurant about that, but then um, that was tackled. But generally, Maharaj, we didn't have much uh, difficulties. We didn't have much of a uh, negative view of the people. They do appreciate Prashadam. I just wanted to add one small thing. I don't know if it's a, if we can call it negative, but it's certainly different. Like when we're distributing prasharam to somebody, and uh, if, and then you you finish distributing the prasharam, and then another person finally comes up and says, "Where's my prasharam?" Uh, and then you, uh, everything is over. But then and then then the person gets upset. I didn't get any prasharam. So that's like that's certainly a different experience because. Um, uh, it's it, it, you're also disappointed in yourself for not getting so much prasharam. And then the person who, who could have got some prasadam and had some change in his life, he's also... That, so that, so that's, that's, that's why I make it a fact that whenever I go, I carry a big box of some maha prasadam from, uh, from our temple. So uh, whenever, whenever I'm traveling and, and I just distribute something, I mean buy something from some shop or something, first thing, before paying them money, I first give them some prasadam. And then the entire dealing is so different. And I say that the prasadam is from, from Krishna and this Krishna prasadam, they say, oh, to and then suddenly the entire dealing is very sweet. And yeah, I, that's one small realization that I had. Okay. Uh, just wanted to add a few things to the negative what Maharaj was mentioning about like in restaurant. Usually we see that uh, like we as ISKCON promoting prasadam, but nowadays we see that many of our ISKCON restaurants are more like commercial rather you know that quality uh, but the purity you know who is cooking like through i what i understand from restaurants of iskon we supposed to distribute like sale prasadam which is cooked first class cooked by brahman initiated devotees and with good consciousness so whoever is eating uh, also you know through prasadam he start uh, you know uh, like getting into understanding krishna consciousness he start liking krishna consciousness so that one negative thing i feel is know there now which is you know and also when devotees sometimes our sadhana is not good or uh, then basically sometimes when we are meet devotees meet rather discussing krishna consciousness they are more into prajalpas and talking finding faults of others he did like this he did like that rather you know uh, you know rather you know discussing about krishna Gata. Oh. Oh, and the, the topics of the conversation degrade, eh? Rather yes. than being in Krishna consciousness, they, they go to the, the bad things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, of course, the idea of coming together with the devotees is to help them to get rid of their doubts. So, you know, when they talk bad, it means they've got some doubts about something. So sometimes we have to deal with these things. We have to reply and answer to them and explain what happened, what's the situation. It's certainly difficult. Senior association, you know, somebody, some senior person has to always be there to try to keep the, the, the topics of the conversation on, on the proper path that they don't get into just finding fault 
that, but they should understand what are the problems, what are the difficulties. Maybe some fault there, you know, just like in restaurants, you're working there in a restaurant, people may say, oh, the restaurant's making so much money, we're hardly getting any pay, you know. <laughs> They may say like that. I don't know. Yes. No, so you have to deal with these kind of comp problems. You have to explain that. You, yeah, well, you have, should be happy you're working for Krishna. You work in a Krishna conscious atmosphere. And whatever profit the, temp the restaurant makes, it goes to the temple. It's not going in anybody's pocket. It's, it's, it's going to the temple. You go and work in a karmi restaurant, you, 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 you know, you, you won't find the same facilities there, no prasadam, and all the profits going in the money of the owner, and he's using all the profit for his sense gratification. But in Govinda, as you're working for Krishna, so you have to deal with doubts, you have to somehow reply, keep people happy, try to bring them to a higher level of consciousness. I know it's not easy. <laughs> and again, Maharaj, there are costs for everything, you know, particularly in the Western country, um, it's too, too high, so we have to adjust with that also, you know, the, the cost of the ingredient boga, the cost of the, the maintenance of the Govindas paying the rent, all things so many expenses, yeah, so many expenses yeah. involved. Yes, yes. Actually, restaurants are very difficult. I know yes. in, 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 in the UK, when I was in the UK, they, they, they used to see nearly 80% of restaurants which open close. They don't make it for hardly any time. They all run into a big debt and so they close up. It's yes. really a difficult business. But Prabhupada really wanted it very much. He wanted very much that we'd have restaurants and govindas and distribute prasadam, have people come, let them eat prasadam. Considered it very important. It was like Prabhupada said, this is in the next phase of our preaching. He said, we haven't made enough temples, now we should make restaurants and let people come and have, come to the restaurant and eat. And in this way also the householders can be maintained. And the idea is that Krishna conscious householders will find employment there and they can maintain themselves by working in the Govindas. No. So, Ma Maharaj, I, have, I just have uh, this concern like restaurant opening which supports also temple financially. Uh, but at the same time is that also one of the primary goals but also but like it's also important to have like prasadam, proper prasadam cooked and serve in the restaurant. Rather, nowadays we see like a lot of outside karmis, they are hired to be cooking, you know, in the restaurant, you know, and then uh, that is not impacting the, those who are taking the prasadam in the Govinda. Well, this, it's not really how it's meant to be. The Govinda is meant to employ devotees. We like to have devotees come and work in the restaurant. We recently opened a restaurant in Far Eastern Russia in a city called Kamchatki and they brought the devotees from like Ukraine and like that, but they have nice devotees all coming to work there. You can, if you advertise often, you can find devotees willing to come and work, looking for jobs. Not that you have to hire people who are not devotees, it's certainly very poor standard if you bring in people who are not devotees to come and work in our Govinda restaurant. It's defeating the purpose, actually. Usually when I travel different parts of India, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, you're back. Well, we were abruptly, <laughs> abruptly ejected from our room. <laughs> okay, okay, our time is up. Eh?
Okay. Okay, that's it. Now we can hear you. Yes. So you were saying something. <laughs> and I was saying that uh, we were abruptly <laughs> thrown out of our room. Ejected from the room. <laughs> I put it on a timer, you see, and it must have just said, okay, right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, so, we had we had very nice discussion in room number okay. five. So, Maharaj, we've got like ten minutes left. Maybe if you start off with your room, but I was thinking, because I've, I've visited a couple of rooms and there were some really nice conversations going on, maybe we could continue this tomorrow morning a little bit, um, because it's quite an important important part of the lecture of devotion, because these are really practical instructions in our spiritual life as well, practical realizations. Uh -huh. So if that's okay with you, we could hear from maybe your group first yeah. today, yeah. and then we'll hear from some of the other groups tomorrow morning. Is that okay with you? Yes, fine. Okay. okay. So I'll start off. The, the, uh, we heard about nice exchanges, about devotees meeting together and inquiring from each other, but sometimes the topic of the discussions degrade and uh, you know it's not very Krishna conscious. When they start discussing with each other, they just start criticizing people and different things in their movement and it doesn't really help the devotees at all. So I said that well, you have to be very careful in these kind of conversations, make sure senior devotee is there to guide the conversation, to lead it to the proper path, to under, you know, to take away these doubts which are there in the mind. We also heard about some restaurants, that there's some restaurants where they employ people who are not devotees to do the cooking. So I said, this is really not how Prabhupada envisioned it, that the Govinda's restaurants were meant to employ the devotees. The, the devotees could cook food there and offer it to Krishna and people would come and get prasadam. We don't just want to run a business. It's not just running a restaurant, but it's, the idea is to give people prasadam. So I'm a, a little disturbed to hear about how non-devotees are coming and cooking in restaurants. Okay, so we were discussing these things. So maybe we can hear from some other room. Oh, um, maybe we can go to... Ruskin Prabhu, what group were you in? Discussed um, many many experiences, individual experiences, positive, and uh, how it affected our uh, lives positively, and how it and negative. These exchanges, loving exchanges. Um, in for instance, in my case, in the lockdown period, uh, I was really. I want to change the festival in Bhutan, and uh, you know I was in in the in the room, and and then uh, the the energy, uh, the spiritual energy just was different compared to when it was when when everything was more uh, when we could attend attend the festivals and everything. So I was it was, it was just left up to me to motivate myself so that was one one of mine and some other devotee any any Prabhuji? i don't know from your group else? yeah from your group somebody else from room three might want to come in where was rukum where was he which place he's in my oh he's in my yeah he's in my <laughs> he's a he's a my resident he does a lot of service here <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've got a couple like that in the group actually. Um, okay. nice, it's nice to see the young people <coughs> joining in. Yeah. 
Have you got anybody else in room three there who would like to contribute something as well? That would be nice to hear from you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kari Singh. Yeah, we was, yeah, I was part of uh, room number three. So we discussed mostly about, in general we discussed how when we have good loving exchanges with new people that it helps to make them a nice devotee. So everyone remembers how devotees helped me in different circumstances and uh, because of that I became a devotee. So they feel the difference how outside people behave and how different devotees are so much caring and all. In general we discussed. And also negativity also discussed that in temple some new people come, so how we have to be very careful, we have to have some training to deal with new people, how to, because they don't know many things and we, we should not get angry with them and how sh should we deal with the situation when they are in. In general we have discussed all these things, how that will have an impact or uh, impression in their life. Do you want to comment on that Maharaj? Yes, we also related like that, similarly, that people from the very beginning, their first contact with the devotee was when the devotee gave them prasadam, some kind of maybe an orange or a cookie or something. And so they remember these things. It's, uh, you know, putting the seed of bhakti into them. Their first contact with the devotee, the devotee giving them something. So creates a very favorable relationship with the devotees. So we can actually see this, um, these loving exchanges of giving and receiving in action, especially when it comes to new devotees. I remember when I first went to the manor, I was in my jeans and my t-shirt, and um, it was a, I hadn't slept all night, I couldn't sleep, I didn't, didn't know something was wrong, and I didn't know what was wrong, and I think I must have been about coming up to 49 years old, it's about five years ago. And um, I went to Dr. Vedanta Manor and I thought, I have to go to this morning program that I see advertised on the internet. And I turned up there, stinking of cigarettes, because I used to smoke at that time. And I, and I had my jeans and t-shirt on. And the first thing somebody did, because there's, there's two places to stand. On the, on the right by the entrance, the Mataji stand. And on the left stand, the Prabhu's. And of course I went in very sheepishly and just stood sort of in the, on the right side where the Mataji's were. And then somebody said, Prabhu's over this side. And I thought, ooh. And I didn't know what he meant by that. Prabhu's, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never heard this word before. Then another young man came over and he said, it's okay. Um, he said, he means gentleman over this side. You're clearly new. Yes, I said yes. And he said, oh, just one minute. And he brought a little box with a mapa suite. I didn't know what was in it, and I thought, oh, okay, what's this? He said, have a look at it after the morning program and come and see me. So then after, when, when, when the Mangala had finished, I opened the box and I, I have a very sweet tooth, so my, I, I, I felt this overwhelming sense of joy because somebody had given me something so simple, but something that I really, really liked, and in the temple, and I felt immediately this sense of warmth. Um, anyway, that's just a realization I wanted to share with you, so yeah. <laughs> It's interesting because for me, when I read the Nectar of Instruction, I see that Prabhupada has actually crafted this movement according to the instructions of the Nectar of Instruction. He's given us the morning program, the way of you know, sharing prasadam. It's all there in the Nectar of Instruction. He's put these instructions into a very practical, everyday experience for us. And I think sometimes we miss that, we miss that connection. Um, so it's nice to hear your realizations as well. It's good, good to hear some more tomorrow, I think. Um, so, Maharaj, we've reached um, 10.30. Should we stop there for today? Okay. Okay, and then we can continue tomorrow morning with a couple of these, if that's okay with you? Yes, we'll continue okay. tomorrow. With, we'll okay. hear a couple more rooms about the realizations. Okay. So they can meditate on it this evening, or today, and yeah. r tell us tomorrow. And we'll go on tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Sorry about the breakdown. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj.